welcome to the first lecture of this week this is the last lecture in the module 1 which was about understanding sustainability and sustainable development so what we will do in this particular lecture is relationship between approaches to design for sustainability and the application context so we will take an example and try to see how on uh, di diverse approaches can apply to a given um, problem context. So, as we discussed in the last week, the system design for sustainability or design for sustainability can be approached at the four different levels that is the product level, um, where uh, product innovation level, where design approaches focus on improving existing or uh, developing completely new products. In product service system innovation level, the focus is beyond individual products towards integrated combination of products and services. Spatio social innovation level here the context of innovation is on human settlements and the spatio social conditions of their communities. This can be addressed on different scales from neighborhoods to cities. The fourth level is the socio technical innovation level. Here design approaches are focusing on promoting radical changes on how societal needs such as nutrition and transport or mobility are fulfilled and thus on supporting transitions to new socio technical systems. I would suggest that when you are going through this particular um, lecture, if you also keep the um, last two lectures that is lecture 2 A and 2 B. So, the lecture 2 A and 2 B which was talking about diverse approaches to design for sustainability. If you keep that particular presentation also open um, in your um, laptop screen, it will be great. So, when I take you through one particular example, if you want to recall what that particular approach was, you can pause the video and go back to that particular slide, read about it and then again restart uh, the lecture um, on the example. So, the problem statement that we will be taking uh, forward in today's lecture is, uh, so you see this 200 milliliter water bottle. It is a plastic bottle, the body of the bottle, the transparent part, this part is made up of a plastic called polyethylene terephthalate PET and the cap and the small ring at the cap, they are made up of another plastic called polypropylene PP. So, we can finish this water in almost one go and then the bottle is thrown away. It is used mostly during events like parties, conferences, meetings and so on. We might argue that why not give a bigger bottle say a 1 litre bottle or say 500 ml bottle because if this event is going to run for a couple of hours you might need to have more water which you will keep on drinking after regular intervals of time. But usually it has been observed that if it is a 500 ml bottle mostly the water goes wasted because people usually do not like to carry a bottle around uh, them or they might just leave the bottle at some place and then forget about it or they have no way to know which one is their bottle. So, uh, usually it is observed that giving a 200 ml bottle is a more optimal size rather than giving a 500 liter uh, 500 ml bottle and of course, not a 100 ml bottle. So, now you can imagine the amount of waste that is being created because of these bottles during any event. You might also like to go for these bottles say in an airport or such similar kind of context where you just want to have a drink of water and throw away the bottle. So, let us try to look at the different approaches and how each of these approaches will try to solve this particular problem. So, first we start with the product innovation level. So, uh, the first the approach in this product innovation level was the green design. I will not go through the details of these, but I have tried to incorporate one slide so that it helps you in recalling what the definition of that particular uh, context was and we can go to the e example. So, in green design we are focusing on reduce, reuse or recycle. So, the many different approaches can be, so one approach can be reduce the amount of material used in this uh, product. So, uh, I can add additional corrugations to it, as a result my bottle becomes more strong. So, all these shapes that you can see on these bottle, all these shapes that you can see on this bottle, the things which are coming in and going out on the, the form of the bottle or say this particular, they are the corrugations and they are added to give strength. So, I can use lesser thickness of the material to get the same level of strength. 
So, by addition of corrugation I can add strength and then I can reduce the wall thickness of the plastic material used. As a result the volume of plastic used will reduced or say another concept of green design is reusing parts of the whole products in design of new products. So, say for example, the pet bottle that can be used for making uh, the um, uh, denim either trousers or the um, uh, jacket and the bottle caps they can be reused to make buttons. It does not solve the problem, but yes if it is uh, if the product can be collected back then it can be converted into these uh, products. There is lot of problem in the collection a major part of it uh, is nowadays collected, but still a big chunk of it ends into landfills or the oceans. Another trouble is in order to make these alternate products I need to spend in more energy, more energy for making the product, more energy for cleaning these uh, bottles, crushing them, processing them and so on. Coming to the eco design concept where we do a life cycle assessment. So, say for example, I can drink the same water which I can drink in a plastic bottle by using a glass bottle. So, these glass bottles after drinking water can be thrown in a trash can and they can be collected, they can be cleaned and again used for another cycle of providing drinking water or I can install a water dispenser and I can keep some paper cups over there. So, these are paper cups with a thin lining of plastic on the inside surface. So, anybody who wants to drink water they can uh, fill a paper cup, drink the water and throw away the paper cups. In this case the waste that is being generated is the paper cups which are not recyclable because of the plastic layer inside it. Another option is I can have glasses made up of glass. So, one can drink water then keep it in a um, uh, tray or container on the side and those glasses can be cleaned back and reused. In this case the troubles might be like the impact which is caused due to the cleaning which is uh, soap and water. So, what the life cycle assessment approach or the eco design approach will try to um, emphasize is do a comparative between all these four approaches. You can also take up many more alternatives which offers you the same functionality and then compare which one is the most eco friendly under a given circumstances. The next two lectures of this uh, week will deal with how to do this. Now comes the emotionally durable design wherein you want to enable the person to get attached to the product and as a result elongate the life of the product which can be done by enabling personalization or designing products that age with dignity or designing products that allow users to capture memories. Say for example, I call people for a party to my house for the birthday of my um, child and I can give every guest who is coming in a glass with something ished on it which um, helps them to remember the event. So, we love uh, with love from our sweet angel on her first birthday. So, this can be a personalized this just this is just an example of one way of personalizing you can also give away the glasses to the guests with a small itching machine and say ok personalize it here itself and start drinking water and you can carry away the glass with you. So, in this case I am elongating the life of the glass. So, my guests can carry away this glass along with them and keep it as a memory of the event. Next one design for sustainable behavior change. So, in this case you try to um, make people adopt a desired sustainable behavior and abandon an unwanted sustainable behavior. So, say for example, what we can do is we can install a um, water dispenser. Again, because I am using a mineral water bottle or some kind of purified water. So, I am ensuring it is safe drinking water. So, you in install a water dispenser. You have another dispenser from which one can buy bottles. So, either you carry your own bottles or you can buy a bottle from that dispenser which can be um, carried along with you for your other um, upcoming trips. Along with a campaign statement. 
Do you know each year the per capita consumption of uh, water bottled in plastic is more than 100 liter in our country? Take a step towards carrying your own bottle and save our planet. So in this particular way you are trying to create certain kind of awareness in people and also enabling them to buy a bottle then and there if they are not carrying one and keep on using it thereafter. So this can be a concept which is inspired by the design for sustainable behavior uh, approach. Now coming to the cradle to cradle design approach. So, a company called uh, Dopper, they designed a reusable bottle uh, which has been cradle to cradle certified. So, in cradle to cradle certification, there are different levels of certification that you can get. So, for their bottle, it is again a reusable bottle. For their bottle, it has a silver um, uh, certification, silver level certification. You can go to this website and read more about this um, uh, bottle. There is another pet bottle which has been uh, designed by a company called UAB um, Aquavita and they have also got a cradle to cradle certification. Their certification is a basic level certification. So, it is again a disposable water bottle. So, one time use and then you dispose it off. It is made up of pet like uh, the bottle that we started with and it is cradle to cradle certified. Again the problem is one has to take these bottles and put it into the recycling and reuse phase and uh, it does not help in changing behavior of people towards more sustainable consumption. Then comes the nature inspired design or biomimicry design wherein you can mimic in terms of form, products and systems. So, like I told you in the first example, the green design example that you can produce corrugations in your bottle and as a result it will help you to um, strengthen the bottle and that will can and you can have thinner wall thickness for the plastic material used. So, you use lesser plastic material. So, in this particular bottle which has been um, uh, developed, they take ins took inspiration from a uh, pine tree. So, they found that to pro uh, protect the bottle from pressure under compression. So, there are lots of bottles stacked together which will be under compression because of the weight of all other bottles on top of them. So, to protect the bottle from pre uh, pressure under compression impact because it is moving in a truck. So, there will be impact or shear forces. So, when you are trying to open the bottle the inclination angle thickness and depth of the helical stru structure. So, the, there are helical structures over here, they keep on varying. They vary according to the amount of vertical and horizontal strength needed at certain surface, uh, surface curvature of the bottle. How was this developed? Based on a natural model of spiral growth, the team developed a new design for the structure of the bottle's main body, creating helical structures that make the bottle more durable without adding extra weight. So, by doing this, UNICER estimates that the new design has reduced total raw material use by 7 percent, enabling savings of 250 tons of raw material per year. So, again it does not affect people from uh, changing their uh, consumption, they still will consume lot of bottles, but in this uh, particular context each uh, bottles weight is reduced by using biomimicry principles and you can bring in um, a certain amount of impact. The last one which is designed for the base of the pyramid. So, we spoke about it that there can be two way two approaches to it. Approach one is where I consider them as consumers. So, following that particular approach, I can sell them smaller pouches of mm, water. These pouches are way much more less expensive than the mm, uh, bottles of uh, the pet bottles of water. But again, the it does make clean drinking water accessible to the mm, uh, base of the pyramid, but it uh, and it is also low cost, but these plastic uh, films are a big time waste as well and they cannot be recycled. Now, coming to the second approach of base of pyramid where we try to understand what is their requirement and then try to fulfill through interesting product service solutions. So, now we go to the next level which is the product service system innovation level. 
So, as we spoke about in this particular level, we try to bring in a combination of product and service together, which are together able to satisfy a particular unit of satisfaction. And it uh, says that you really do not need to encourage individual consumption and ownership of mass produced goods, but if you move towards satisfaction based, you can move towards low resource uh, intensive products, which are shared by the community. So, uh, this was the example that I gave you in the previous uh, class as well. So, this is a water dispenser you can carry your own bottles. So, mostly the people will carry their own bottles or containers and per use you can uh, pay for the water. So, this is the uh, approach which we can take for giving clean drinking water to people uh, in the base of the pyramid, but not necessarily base of the pyramid. This approach can is a very frugal and um, effective approach. This can be set up in many different locations for in example in uh, public places, in uh, railway stations, in government offices, in institutions and so on. Now, coming to the third level. The, uh, before going to the third level, the benefit of this second uh, of this solution is also that I do not have waste in terms of bottles of water. In, uh, in terms of the bottle, which is plastic or in terms of the paper cups, which is again paper plus plastic, which needs to go through a recycling phase or which needs to go into the landfills. Here, everybody is carrying their own bottle, because it is more economical to do that and it gets into their behavior, slowly that one has to carry their own bottle and then one can pay and drink water. And at the same time, the providers of this service because they charge say 2 rupees per liter of water, they know that more efficiently they can run this machine with the least amount of wastages, with the least amount of impact on the environment, with the least amount of energy to be consumed. It is in their economical interest to go towards environmental sustainability as well as social sustainability, the socio ethical sustainability. Coming to the third level, which is the spatio social innovation level, what it talks about is uh, assisting with conception, development and scaling up of social innovation. If you remember from the last lecture, uh, what it was talking about is a major focus is on social innovation and we use the existing assets assets in terms of technological assets, knowledge assets or um, physical assets like roads or um, conditions of that particular place. So, we use the existing assets to uh, conceptualize, develop and scale up social innovation. Not much innovation happens in this particular context in terms of technology. There was also a, con uh, we also saw that there are different interpretations and perspectives on social innovation and what roles design can play in these social innovations. So, social innovation can mean well being of people, can mean providing people with their basic amenities like nutrition, drinking water, roads and so on. It can also imply harmony and so on. So, there can be many interpretations of what social innovation is, but wherever it is connected to the communities, it is about social innovation. So, I will show you one particular example. This uh, example is how um, people are trying to revive the rain fed rivers. So, not much technology is used, we are using our existing assets and knowledge and by mobilizing people, mobilizing organizations. The, and through them mobilizing economic resources, one is trying to revive uh, the rivers. The model is, or scale, or is also scalable, it has already been scaled to uh, some 14 rivers in India. So, we will go through this uh, lecture. Namaskar, Sriyakal. Today I am going to speak about 
one of the most important source of our existence next to oxygen water i see hundreds of people sitting here in the auditorium or i can say 70% of this auditorium is filled with water yeah because 70% of our water, our body is water our bones our skin our muscles everything is made of water isn't it amazing everything is what we see is dust of water there is so much of water in the world we see a waterfall oceans huge lakes reservoir but sometimes we just wonder that why there is scarcity of water have you ever thought about that i tell you something very interesting let's say if we put all the water in the world in this bottle how much do you think is a drinkable water any guess just this much guys so there is 70 to 75% water on the earth surface only 1% is a drinkable water and out of that 90% is in antarctica so the other day i was uh, discussing with one of my friend so he asked me a very powerful question he said mr hathi what is your point is it a scarcity of water or people's relationship with the water so i really started thinking about that and ladies and gentlemen you are right more important is our relationship with the water have you ever wondered what is your relationship with the water nearly 3000 farmers are migrating from the rural areas to the urban areas every day in this india for the livelihood and because of scarcity of water my previous speaker spoke about open defecation the government is trying hard to give a toilets in each and every home this last so many years but they failed because of scarcity of water farmers are committing suicide you must have heard about that one of the reason for farmer suicide is scarcity of water our government says the whole ratio between the urban and rural area has changed it was it used to be 30 to 70% now it is 45 to 55% which is also creating a problem in the urban area understanding this you know that why water is so important the art of living this class so many years doing several projects on the you know conservation of water we have made the check dams rain water harvesting recharging the ground water which is very important you know rejuvenating the river our traditional river we used to have rivers in all over the countries but which is not rejuvenated since so many years tree plantation also which is very important aspect but today i am going to share a very beautiful story of transformation with you this is a reina river in the latu district of maharashtra and a man behind the story makran dave or his other name is makran jadav he is a civil engineer by profession he is from the farmer family he is also an art of living trainer and his area from where he is coming the latu district since last so many year that area is drought affected so he has seen that scarcity and struggle for the water from the childhood you no know, he used to share that when i used to see my mother going you know walking kilometers together just to fetch a two bucket full of water it was so painful you know meri maa ko jana pad raha hai aur wahan se roz baldi utha ke pani lana pad raha hai so he was always looking for a solution that what is the solution that why there is so much of scarcity of the water and after he became a trainer he started you know conducting the workshop in a different areas in the villages started interacting with the people slowly he he could understand the gravity of the problem and then he decided oh i must do something about this i need to create a model you know sustainable model which which can inspire so many other people so he took it as a challenge he selected a river a rena river which is in the renapur village and the population of that village is around 20000 so initially he faced lot of challenges 
one of the biggest challenge was people were very apathetic to the issue they were expecting the government the local administration to take care of that issue oh why should i take the responsibility it's not my responsibility you know and alcoholism was one of the biggest issue in that laid back attitude of the youth oh i don't want to do anything you know i'm i'm getting everything you know, i'm getting all the freebies from the government why should i do anything and then there was a lot of groupism on the basis of caste and religion you know political uh, groups so to overcome all these challenges you know he targeted the youth and he conducted he organized one workshop called youth leadership training program which is the most powerful workshop of the art of living foundation it's a eight days very intense training program for the youth which really helps them to transform their mindset their behavior their attitudes the relationship with the people and you know the society so that made this youth you know he trained 50 youth a change agent for the society and through them he slowly started mobilizing the society you know bringing people together i tell you something very interesting you know in in villages you have this gram sabha probably you have heard about it the gram sabha is exactly a model of parliament in the village so unless the gram sabha pass the resolution that they do, they want to do something in that particular village you can't do anything and that was a village of 20000 people so it really took him some time to bring this pe- people together and you know uh, take a decision yes we want to revive this river and not only reviving he inspired people through this youth to contribute for the same you know that changing the mindset oh the government administration no it is my responsibility so there was a lot of challenges but i say that badalon ke darmiyan kuch aisi saazish hui mera ghar bitti ka tha aur wahi barish hui unhe bhi jit hai wahi bijliya girane ki हमें भी जीते वहीं आशियाना बनाने की तो हिज कॉन्स्टेंट यू नो परसिवेरेंस टू डू समथिंग हैज मेड अ चेंज लेट मी टेल यू लेट मी टेक यू थ्रू द जर्नी ऑफ दिस ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन दिस इज द रेना रिवर ऑन द एट ऑफ मार्च 2015। थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन ओ वेदर आई शुड रियली कॉल इट अ रिवर इज अ क्वेश्चन यू नो तो ऑन द एट ऑफ मार्च इट वॉज लाइक दिस and it took almost 90 days of hard work you know to deepen the river widen the river and clear the entire stretch so it was a 4000 meters long 25 meter wide and 7 meter deep 90 days and they removed 12 like 60000 cubic meters of silt from that you know silt is like a, a black salt i mean a black soil you know which you can use as a manure it's very very fertile so the farmers they took away all that soil and they put it into their farms 12000 at 12 lakh 60000 cubic meter of soil so once that entire patch was clear they just had to wait for rainfall and here you have in the first rainfall itself the entire river was filled with the fresh water 126 crore liter of water was stored and not only that four time more got percolated in the ground four time more that is almost 500 crore you know it takes some time but over a period of next three months and if i give you this figure my earlier uh, speaker was speaking about that you know on an average the urban people need about 135 liters of water but they don't get it in the village it's very different they need only 55 liters of water per day they use or they consume so uh, a village of 20000 people in a year they consume only 40 crore liters of water and we have stored 126 crore of liter in just 3 months time that is the number you know if you decode that 126 crore you know, liter and 2000 acres of land got irrigated yeah i think we need uh, we deserve a lo- uh, the big round of applause from you which will also help you to be a little more enthusiastic in this afternoon so you know ladies and gentlemen many time people ask like how do you measure the effectiveness of the any project so i often say the first thing is people ask this question is it a cost effective now if i show you the figure 
government estimate was 6.28 crore for that river renovation and we did that only in 150 crore 2 crores and out of that 75 percent was contributed by the community and rest of the money 25 percent was given by the art of living foundation sustainability so when community is doing something there is a sense of ownership so i have done it and i have to maintain it so it is the most sustainable model that we had you know you don't have to worry about it oh that you know why again next year we need to diesel that thing and maintain it they said yeah, it is now our baby will take care of it don't worry about that sustainability and replicable so this is not the only river in india we have revived more than 14 rivers in karnataka in kerala in maharashtra in andhra pradesh Pamba, probably many of you know about uh, Shabri Malai. This river is connected to Shabri Malai. You no, know, it was very dirty. So our people went and you know, revived the entire river. Is it inspiring? Yes. Are you able to define your relationship with the water? Yes. No. How can you help? No. Karma bhumi ki dunya me, sham sabhi ko karna padta hai. भगवान सिर्फ लकीरे देता है रंग हमी को भरना पड़ता है रंग हमी को भरना पड़ता है द ड्रीम पद एन द नाइट इज टू शॉर्ट बट दो लाइक टू फुलफिल इट पद एन द डे इज टू शॉर्ट एंड आई फील दैट ऑल ऑफ अस नीड टू बी अ ड्रीमर वी नीड टू सी द बिग ड्रीम अबाउट अवर कम्युनिटी अबाउट अवर कंट्री अबाउट अवर वर्ल्ड how can we make it a better place for our next generation to come you know, we got it so we are not we have not inherited this we have borrowed it from our next generation so when we leave this planet we need to make it a little more better than how we got it right save water save life so what kind of difference do you see in this approach so when we were talking at the product innovation level we were only thinking of the problem of delivering uh, water to people drinkable water to people during events and how do i package that water how do i package it more environmentally friendly or less environmentally damaging in a damaging manner as soon as we went into the product service innovation level we were trying to give it a different approach altogether we were thinking it's not like I have to reach 200 ml of packaged water to people. It's like what is the unit of satisfaction? The unit of satisfaction is not 200 ml of packaged water in a plastic bottle or a glass bottle or so on. The unit of satisfaction is clean drinking water. So this can be given by a combination of a product as well as a service. Now as soon as we get into the third level, which is the spatio social level. our purview expands further in a particular spatial condition like the example that you saw in the video it is a place where uh, rainfalls are uh, happening in say 3 months uh, in a year the rivers are rain fed rivers so they collect water and that is the only source of uh, water for the rest of the year the people living in the rural areas they have to travel a long distances to get water so that is the characteristics of the space of the geography of that region and people are living under certain circumstances their agricultural production is way much lower because of lack of water you cannot irrigate your fields it is completely dependent on monsoon which means you might only be able to reap one crop in a year now when people come together there is not much technological innovation that has happened but it's like social innovation people across many villages came together organizations were formed art of living along with government initiatives and so on they came together they formulated a particular system for cooperating with each other expanded the river dug up the river the silt that they are getting that is also very useful for them because the people who are doing they take it back to their farms and they are getting uh, 
very healthy soil for growing their crops and they could solve their water problem. So, the perspective with which we are looking at the problem keeps on changing from level 1 to level 2 to level 3. Our problem becomes more expanded when this, uh, so as uh, our speaker uh, Mr. Dashak Hathi explained to you, it is also a sustainable model because the people in the villages um, uh, came together to um, take care of their river. So, the chances that they will keep on doing it year after year and keep on reaping the benefits is very high which means social um, and economic sustainability of that component which will bring in eventually environmental sustainability. And it has also been replicated over 14 different rivers. Another uh, approach in uh, spatio social is the systemic design, where our focus is on designing locally based productive systems in which the waste from one productive process becomes input to the other process. As we discussed in the last class, in cradle to cradle or uh, biomimicry, uh, we are uh, our focus is on the nature inspired uh, forms and processes. But in systemic design, our focus is on the third level of biomimicry that is mimicking natural ecosystems. So, I will show you one example of work which has been done by the Technical University of Turin in Italy. So, first they tried to map the existing water supply network in Turin. You can read more about this particular project in the source paper mentioned and uh, see how the systemic design approach has been developed. So, what was observed that there is a purification plan which purifies all the water through the supply network, it is supplied to the city and drinkable water. So, the water is purified up to the level that it becomes drinking water is used for different kinds of purposes. So, it is drinkable water which you flush in your toilets, it is drinkable water which you use for bathing. It is drinkable water which you are mm, using for washing your car or for watering your lawn. So, now drinkable water is not required for doing all these activities and all this water then goes down the sewer which is the same line irrespective of the level of contamination in the water it all goes into the same line which is the sewer line and goes for water treatment. So, what a waste of precious resources. So, they tried to come up with an alternative by trying to do a systemic design, wherein they have to understand the uh, how to get inspired from the nature at the ecosystem level, where waste from one process can become an input to the other process. So, the systemic design methodology drove the research through the, uh, research team through an intense exploration of the complex properties of liquid water, touching a variety of disciplines from physics to chemistry until bioengineering and medicine that has opened the frontiers to a more holistic understanding of water. In systemic design, you require a team with a large variety of expertise who can bring in the knowledge from as many disciplines as possible for a particular context. So, they came up with certain kinds of solution, you I am not going into the depth of the solutions because they belong, they come from particular um, disciplines. So, it might be easy for people to understand if they belong to that discipline, if they do not belong to that discipline, it might the solution might not be very easy to understand. If you are interested in reading more about it, you can go through the um, source material I have mentioned. So, they came up with two different ways of water purification. The first one they called it as exclusion zone in which the separation process is driven by incident light energy which builds the exclusion zone and thereby excludes the contaminants. It is a self cleaning process that involve a behavior of water in the vicinity of hydrophilic surfaces. So, hydrophilic surface is a surface which loves water that occur naturally at ambient temperatures and pressure. The next process that they um, uh, used was the vortex process which we already discussed in one of our previous lectures, 
So, to study the ability of vortex water to separate suspended solids, a cylindrical device had been made in order to let water flow um, organizing itself into a vortex. A macroscopic structure has emerged uh, spontaneously out of the flow. Lab testing proved a separation of suspended solids and natural organic matter over um, uh, by 95 to 98 percent in a single pass that is when water passed through it only once. So, now they came up with a development of a proposed schematic for the city. So, here you can see vortex pre treatment um, uh, water is being pre treated by using vortex in this case. So, you have water coming from say rain water or any other source, then it goes to a storage tank which can be used for personal use, it can also be used for washing. Uh, after it has been taken through a personal uh, usage care, it can be again purified for suspended solid matter to be used in a washing machine which is possible or it can this water storage can directly be used for washing clothes. Uh, Another system is the storage is the egg shaped container uh, from here. You get uh, spring water which you can use for cooking and drinking. This water the waste coming from here can be actually used for uh, gardening purposes or it can be taken through the phyto uh, depurification process. So, it goes to the garden or it goes for for the usage. You can also use the waste water for your uh, toilets, which can go through a better cleaning process, because the water which is flushing out of a toilet uh, contains much higher degree of pathogens and then it can be also supplied into the garden or for plant growth. So, they proposed a new schematic, which uses different uh, sources of water as well as different purification systems and the waste water from one particular process can be used in another mm, process or the waste from one waste uh, from one particular mm, process can be purified using certain process to a certain degree to be used in another process which does not require mm, drinking water level purification. Again in this particular model as he pointed out while talking about the limitations of this model, we are not trying to minimize on consumption of water you use as much water as you want that is what this system means, but the water treatment process has been developed in a way the ecosystem works. The same problem comes if I do not reduce my water consumption, then uh, I will build up the concentration of say either uh, pollutants to a high degree or I am using energy in certain processes. So, I will be consuming too much of energy. So, that is the uh, limitation of this process, but if this could be uh, used in a um, uh, um, say in combination with a technique where in consumption of water by the user is also reduced, it can give a better more holistic picture. Now, coming to the fourth level, which is the socio technical system innovation level. So, here in this case you have both social innovation as well as technical um, innovation and both of them are put together in a system and together help to achieve sustainability. So, here the focus is on transformation of socio technical systems through strategic design. So, um, uh, Chewang Norfil um, is a civil engineer from Ladakh. So, if you know Ladakh is uh, in uh, the northernmost part of our country and it is a very cold place and it is very high altitude. He noticed uh, that a small stream had frozen solid under the shade of a group of poplar trees, though it followed free, uh, flowed freely elsewhere in his yard. At that point of time he realized because uh, when water is moving too quickly that is what is happening in the river, it does not get the opportunity to freeze. Whereas, when the water was struck trickling down sluggishly from the uh, poplar uh, tree, it did get the time to freeze. So, based on this he created artificial glaciers by diverting a river into a valley, slowing the stream by constructing checks. The artificial glaciers increase the groundwater recharge, 
during summer when it starts melting because it is melting slowly it rejuvenates the spring and providing water for irrigation he constructed them at lower elevations so that they melt earlier expanding the growing season so this artificial glacier he first time built in 1987 now when so this is the technical um, innovation that has been done now he took it to various villages where this can be used so this is a case from one of the villages it's a nang village in ladakh area the villagers decided to depute one person from each household to carry out the civil work they camped at the site for two weeks since returning home meant a three hour grueling walk 40 dry masonry wall embankments covering a total length of 1375 feet were constructed the technology was handed over to the head of the village locally called as the goba or nambardar so occasionally flooding in the stream will also happen and that will damage the embank uh, embankments so mm, the villagers would have to sustain mm, this development as well so in order to sustain the infrastructure the villagers decided to keep a revolving fund with the village council for the repair and maintenance they indicate that uh, they, uh, so you might also know that uh, mm, uh, our government has a scheme called mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act which uh, ensured 100 days of work to all poor rural households. So, they dis in, uh, decided that major repair work or minor repair work, they can also be undertaken through this particular uh, scheme. So, wherein uh, they can do the uh, repair work or uh, uh, they can do the repair work or relate some related work into it and uh, the people who are involved in it can be paid by this particular government scheme. So, then this has been replicated to many other villages. So, this is the social innovation where villages come together, um, arrangement for the finances is, happen, is happening through um, uh, contribution from the villages, contribution from other sources were also brought in along with combining the existing government schemes into the um, uh, picture. Further technical innovation has happened in 2014, Sonam Wangchuk improved the water harvesting design created by uh, Chewang Norfel. Uh, so, Norfel's design of constructing glaciers could be implemented only in areas which face north, so that they get limited sunshine despite being in shade. Whereas, Wangchuk's version does not have this restriction and can be installed even at lower altitudes. Uh, also, his design of building conical ice structure uses minimum surface area with maximum volume. This also prevents spring sun and wind from melting the ice. So, this design gives an, an edge over the previous one. Another big edge that is uh, there is its maintenance is not as labor intensive as the uh, uh, Norfolk's version was. So, according to Wanchuk, you need just one person to maintain this. So, once constructed, you need just one person to maintain this. So, let us see how this uh, latest development creates a new influx of social innovation along with it, so that this can spread farther and wider in that particular region. You can see that this solution is very uh, specific to the geographic location, because of the conditions of the geography of that region it is very suitable solution it there is technical innovation involved and there is social innovation involved wherein people come together to form groups uh, uh, institutions like um, government schemes or local district offices come together to form the social innovation part of it and together they achieve sustainable sources of not only drinking water but water for their agricultural purposes and so on so, let us summarize what uh, mm, uh, we did today. So, we discussed on the product innovation level, product service system innovation level, so, spatio social innovation level and socio technical system innovation level one particular example. You can try your mm, uh, hands on taking another example and think how do you uh, use it in all these different levels, what can be your approach. So, I will repeat the summary that we did in the last 
uh, lecture. Why I am repeating it? Because now since we took one example and took the entire journey, you might be better able to uh, appreciate the uh, beauty of the uh, sustainability as a concept. So, the concept of sustainability is not a static goal. My initial goal was okay, let me give people 200 ml of water. It kept on evolving. Okay, what happens with 200 ml of water? You just cannot, there are contexts when you can uh, can't afford it, and there are contexts when it. So, if in Ladakh we tried to reach too many of 200 ml water bottles, I would be creating such a huge uh, environmental degradation over there. Whereas, that region is the place where most of our glaciers originate from and they give us all the water. So, the concept of sustainability is not a static goal, it is dynamic and it keeps on moving its target responding to our in ever increasing understanding of interdependencies between social and ecological system. The video that you saw from uh, the example of uh, rejuvenating river that clearly helps you in understanding that since the understanding of interdependency between social and ecological systems improved, now we know that okay, sustainability does not come by bringing in changes in the medium of packages, but it from my static goal it converted into a more and more and more dynamic goal as we kept on going ahead from one level to another. So, sus and also sustainability is a system property, it is not a property of individual element of the system. If we just change the bottle that is not going to bring in sustainability, because it is just an individual element of the system. Therefore, achieving sustainability requires a process based multi scale systemic approach to planning for sustainability guided by a target or vision. So, you could so see the target or vision becoming bigger and bigger from level 2 to level 3 to level 4. Approaches solely aiming to generate technological solutions for sustainability problems tend to generate techno fixes. These techno fixes target is issues in isolation, disregard systemic intervention opportunities and while seemingly solving a problem at a point in system only transfer that problem to another point. What happens to that denim when you no longer want to use that jacket or the trousers? There is no answer to that, there is no recycling for that. So, I just transferred the problem of the pet bottles from point A in time to point B in time and I have no solution for point B. So, techno fixes has that limitation. On the other hand, a sole focus on social innovation is not likely to achieve the levels of change required in large socio technical systems meeting societies, energy, mobility or housing or infrastructure needs. In that particular context, we need to use social innovation along with technological innovation. So, our framework helps us to visualize linkages, overlaps and complementaries and we can see how we can take aspects from each of these levels and come up to the most optimal solution possible. So, our reading material is the same for this uh, lecture as well. If you have not read it already, in the next two lectures of this week, we will start with module 2 which will deal with product life cycle design methods and strategies. Basically, this is how we uh, by using this method we do uh, eco design, the approach to of product innovation level. Why do we learn about this uh, process? This is although it has its own limitations that it only talks about the production side, it does nothing about the consumption side, but this is a very very important uh, body of knowledge because it is the only body of knowledge which helps you to quantify the energy, the, the waste, the emissions, the amount of natural resources that we are using for making a product. As a result of which I can compare two products, as a result of which I can compare two processes. So, only when we know about these product life cycle design methods and strategies, when we develop uh, design and develop solutions at level 2, 3 or 4, we will be able to check what degree of sustainability could we bring in in the uh, through our design intervention. So, thank you, see you in the next lecture.